The new technologies definitely do have um, a large potential for involving people and engaging people uh, and making things more democratic, if you like. I think they're going to make a significant contribution to, to what we call a critical citizen who can use um, the technologies to, to register their opinions and to seek out thoughts on, on things. This year, Vector has decided to change the way we present and share the results of our commissioned research. To engage our key partners outside the world of Vector, we're holding a series of seminars looking at the key themes we feel have current and significant importance. I feel there's been too much emphasis on failure. I think what we need to look at is why some young people in the most challenging circumstances in some of the most deprived communities do succeed against all the odds. We know that low income is a strong predictor of low educational performance. That fact alone puts the whole challenge of how to improve schools and address social inequity into context. Here at Bechter, we've commissioned research to establish how and how well ICT can be used to create a better and more accessible learning opportunity within our education system despite and because of the challenges endemic in disadvantaged communities. So let's take a look at how one school has managed to turn around their prospects to create a culture of achievement and ambition. When I arrived, one of the first trawls through that I did was to discover that a quarter of the teaching was inadequate and uh, in the end of that year we received a notice to improve for standards, quite rightly, they weren't good enough. However, we came out of notice to improve very quickly and so part of the thinking around improving the quality of teaching was to look at the way in which students prefer to learn. And so as a school we've invested a huge amount in improving the provision in terms of ICT. And give them your instructions. What technology has enabled us to do is to encourage our students to research independently, produce independent outcomes to their learning through all digital mediums, through cameras, through using everything that you can do on a PC, um, in order to prove and to demonstrate their learning in a range of ways that is more engaging to them as young people. I mean, we ban mobile phones, right? And, and it became a sort of critical point where we then had to say, well, actually, we can't ban mobile phones because that's a very useful learning tool. So students can demonstrate their learning, can share their learning in all sorts of, of different ways. We always try and put an element of ICT in, in our planning, but you'll find that the pupils will often suggest things that you've never heard of, like our theme on music and me, they brought their own music in, we had the visualisations going on, the interactive whiteboard, and then they sort of looked at emotions through the colours and things, and it takes it to a different level, a more abstract level that they can cope with. I think the technology in schools is a lot better because it kind of relates to it a lot more because you can kind of look at it and go, all oh, right, OK, whatever, and then it's not like reading or staring at a board or whatever when the teacher's writing it down. It's a lot more fun. With Philippa's particular piece of work on music and me, she's had to look at not just using her art skills like drawing, painting, but also it's all to do with knowledge and understanding and independent work. Now I can, I don't know, it's just kind of brought it on to me because I want to go into teaching or something, so it's kind of, I know what I'm going to do and I can kind of see how things are going to come together. It's a real confidence building tool and it is very motivational because they're used to it, you know, and uh, it is the ICT that actually moves them on that way. technology faculty itself achieves very, very high results and actually the technology helps them to deliver that which is in their head, which otherwise you know, gets a real frustration um, if, you, if you can't deliver what you see. I used to prefer drawing my ideas up because I wasn't really familiar with the pro desktop, but when I started getting onto it, I found it easy. I picked it up very easy and started to design a lot more things on it. Over the time that I've been here, we've been able to construct um, structures and systems within the school that allows us to collect assessment data on a, on a regular basis, analyse it and turn it round so that it becomes information and not just data. 
almost at a touch of a button, I can pick up a profile of a, of a student. I know what they did at Key Stage 1, Key Stage 2. I know what they are projected perhaps to get at Key Stage 3. I know what their current assessment is. So you can log all those behaviour management issues all the times that students have been exited from a class, all the good things that they've done. And it gives you a good whole picture of a child rather than a skewed anecdote that you might get within the, the, the school day. It's helped us really target students who perhaps just come into school, they do everything that's asked of them but no more, and they slide gracefully to a very mediocre you know, assessments and attainment when they could have been a lot better. The use of ICT to manage behaviour and monitor attendance differed significantly between primaries and secondaries, with secondaries being more than twice as likely to consider ICT interventions as useful and effective. Most head teachers agreed that ICT had played a key role in recent school improvement, but they agreed more strongly that it would play a central role in future school development. Digital technology hit home before it hit school in any impactful way. It's everywhere. It's in our living rooms, our cars, in our pockets. And young people, as always, mastered the art of its use and flexibility long before their teachers did. Now ICT can help to oil the wheels of pupil motivation and achievement, and it can help to identify and diagnose areas for concern. But at the end of the day, it's the people. It's the educators, the parents and the learners who will make a difference. Rather than involving students in having to fit into the school model, I think the question we need to be asking is how the school model can adapt to include the diverse experience, backgrounds, skills and competences that are going on outside the school. By commissioning research and holding seminars like this, Vector is supporting the hard work of all professionals who want better opportunities for learners. <laughs>